Hey guys, it's Go! And welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to make your own Hair Dorables doll stand. I'm sure if you collect Hair Dorables, you already know that Series 1 did not come with doll stands. And from Series 2 onward, they started adding these doll stands that can be taken apart and you kind of like have to assemble them yourself. Kind of something like this. And basically, I really like Hair Dorables, but they're super expensive in Japan, so I like to buy them secondhand. When you buy your dolls secondhand, sometimes they don't come with stands. And also, if you buy Series 1, they just don't come with stands anyway. And I was having trouble displaying my dolls that didn't come with stands, and I came up with a way to make my own out of recycled materials. So today I'm going to show you how to do that. If you already have an official stand, the method to making it will be a whole lot easier. But if you don't, uh, you're going to need one of your dolls so that you can measure your stand. As for materials, you're going to need a whole bunch of cardboard, a scrap piece of paper, and some cardstock. I'm pretty sure you can find these lying around in your house. And you're also going to need some wire and a pen, some glue. I'm just using a glue stick here, but you can use pretty much any kind of glue that can glue um, paper together. Uh, if you don't have a doll, you're gonna need um, a ruler so you can measure things. And it's slightly optional, but I like to use it. Um, some masking tape, make sure it's, um, tape that you have a lot of and it has a pattern that you don't necessarily like on it. If you know me, I have a lot of masking tape and I mainly have it because it's pretty, so don't waste your pretty ones, just use one that you don't really like. Another thing that's optional is a nail file. I just find it, uh, sometimes my cardstock, if it's from packaging, it has like a shiny side. This one's hard to see, but it has a smooth side. And it's really hard to glue or paint on the shiny side, so I like to use my nail file to like rough it up a little bit so, that's, so that it's easier to glue things together. And finally, you're going to need some hot glue and also some paint if you want to paint your final product to make it look nice. Also, totally forgot to mention pliers when I listed up the materials earlier, especially one that has a wire cutting tool built into it. So first thing you want to do is if you already have one of the official stands, you want to take it apart and you're going to need this piece. First you want to measure out your wire according to this part of the doll stand and you want to measure a little bit extra so that you can create the seat that the doll is going to be on and you kind of want to figure out where the end of the wire is supposed to go and then fold the wire in half. If you don't have a doll stand, basically what you want to do is while you're measuring your wire, you want to measure from the doll's foot all the way up to her waist and then have a little extra so that you can bend the wire out so that the wire can go in between her legs so that you can make this sort of shape that can hold onto the doll's body snugly like so. And then the next step is to twist your wire like this so that there's two ends kind of sticking up like a Y shape, just like this. And if you already have a stand, you want to sort of have it, like just sort of measure it along and bend your wire to pretty much the exact shape that you already have the stand here. It's really hard to explain. You just want to bend your wire and the pliers really help on this step. You don't have a stand. You want to first make the Y shape and then place your doll onto your wire apparatus here and then shape the wire along the doll's body like so and then pull the stand out and then close the top just slightly so that there's a snug fit. Next, you want to measure your wire according to the stand and snip off the excess wire. 
don't have a stand, you want to place the wire in between the doll's legs like before and sort of measure where the wire ends and make sure that it ends right around her waist and it doesn't go any higher. Kind of like this. If your wire is a bit too long like this, you want to just put the doll on the wire like you've been doing and then you snip off the extra like this. You want the wire to be exactly fit to your doll or else your doll's gonna float on the stand. To prevent the wire from unraveling, you want to take your masking tape and just kind of tape the wires together so that they don't come apart. And this part's optional, but I like to take a small piece of masking tape to cover up the raw edges of the wire. Just so that your doll doesn't get damaged. It should look a bit like this at the end. Next, you want to take your cardstock, and if you have a stand, you want to place it on the cardstock and trace around the shape. If you don't have a stand, you want to take the wire piece that you've already made and make a triangle that's thinner at the top and wider at the base and trace that onto the cardstock. Now, as you can see here, you want to trace that four times and then cut them out. Now, again, this step is optional, but I like to sand the shiny sides of the cardstock so that it's easier to glue. Once everything's been sanded, I'm going to take my glue stick, add some glue to one side, and then I'm going to stack another piece on here and glue them together. And I'm going to do the same for the remaining two. Next, you want to take your two glued together pieces and kind of just measure them together. Sometimes there's slight uh, differences in the shape. Just kind of trim off the excess and make sure that these shapes are all matched together. The most important part is height. Make sure the two heights match up together. If the sides don't match up well, it's okay. You can smooth it out in the later steps. Just make sure that the height is accurate and that um, this thing will cover the wire properly, just like this. Next, you want to take your hot glue and draw a thick line onto the cardstock like this. And then place your wire piece on top. Make sure that the bottom wire doesn't stick out. Next, make sure that you have the right side of the cardstock and then draw another thick line of hot glue right across it. Then you want to take this and put this on top, sandwiching the piece of wire in between the two pieces of cardstock. Make sure that the cardstock is lined up right next to each other so that they're parallel and nothing is sticking out. And most importantly, make sure the wire stays in between the two and nothing sticks out. Also, be very careful when you touch the wire, it's quite hot. And you want to set this aside to cool. For the next step, if you have your stand, you want to take the pen and trace the bottom of the stand onto the piece of scrap paper that you have. If you don't have a stand, simply measure a circle that is about 7 centimeters in diameter and draw that on your piece of scrap paper. To make things easier, simply find something in your house that is round and 7 centimeters in diameter. If you look around in the kitchen, you might be able to find a jar or a cup or something like that. Just find one of those and then trace that on your piece of paper. I think about 7 is a good size. Um, it prevents your doll from falling over, 
but it's also small enough so that you don't take up too much shelf space. Then you want to take your scissors and cut out this circle. Then trace this circle several times onto cardboard. I believe to achieve the height of the original stand, you need about four or five, maybe four and a half pieces of cardboard. It really depends on how thick your cardboard is. Um, if you don't mind matching the original stands, you can kind of make them as tall or as short as you want. Just keep in mind that um, a thin bottom is going to be harder to balance than a thick bottom. I want my stands to match the original as close as possible. I know it's slightly off, but it's close enough. So I'm gonna do four and a half. Once you trace out your circles, you want to cut them out. If you're wondering what I mean by four and a half, you wanna take four of your cardboard circles and just kind of stack them and then take your fifth one and kind of peel off one of the paper sides. Peel off as much as possible. I think this is good enough. And then squish the exposed part and make it as flat as possible. This makes the piece of cardboard much thinner than if you didn't do that. And I don't know, this extra piece kind of makes it around the same height as the original stand compared to just four pieces. Again, the height of the stand is really up to you. I just want to match the height of my original stands so that they don't look so out of place when I display them all together. So the next step is to take your glue stick and glue all of your circles together. If you are wondering why I chose to cut out a circle on scrap paper instead of simply using the stand that I already have, I actually noticed the first time I made my stand that it was actually easier to trace consistent shapes if you used a flat shape instead of a 3D shape. So whether you're using a stand or a jar or whatever, I recommend making this scrap paper circle. Another thing that I use it for is the squished half a uh, piece of cardboard tends to be really bumpy compared to an unsquished one and I just like to glue that uh, scrap paper circle on top of the bumpy surface which really smooths it out. And with that I think I am out of glue. Now this step is optional but I like to do it. I like to take some of my masking tape and tape it around the rough edge of the circle. It just helps to smooth it out. Yes, covering this thing with paint will kind of fill in the holes and make it look not so rough. I just think that having this extra layer of tape really helps to hide all the rough parts. Now for the next part, uh, this part comes back. First you want to check to see where exactly the middle of your stand is and then take your pen and mark where you want to put the stand. Also these little footholds are optional but I just like making them for extra security. They are about four centimeters apart so basically find out where your center is and then place your ruler on the stand and then draw a line. Now you want to take your hot glue and use it to fill in all the gaps on your stand piece right here. Letting the glue harden in between will help you fill in the gaps much neater and also using the side of the nozzle like I was doing earlier will also help smooth it out. Now if you already have a stand making the foot guards is quite easy. Just take a sort of rectangle of cardstock and then shove them into the foot folds to make a round shape. Then while you're pushing the rounded cardstock inside, you want to take your pen and make sure that your cardstock is touching the base. Trace the shape of the foot guard onto the cardstock. 
For the second piece, I'm simply just going to trace it onto another piece of cardboard. Or no, wait, this is cardstock. I spent another while um, filling in the gaps of the stand and it looks like this. The final step you want to do is you want to coat the ends of the wires with hot glue. Now I know that if you did do the masking tape step, the masking tape is already there, but it helps to coat it with hot glue for extra strength. You don't necessarily need the masking tape underneath to do this step. It's just that the layer of masking tape kind of helps uh, create the shape where the glue is supposed to go as opposed to doing it on just the wire but again you can skip the tape if you want to but I don't recommend skipping this step because you really do want to whoops I accidentally peeled off a piece of the tape no worries I can just add more glue anyway as I was saying you do want a layer of protection between your doll and the wire as the doll can seriously get damaged from the exposed wire. And now here's what the stand looks like after I've glued the tips of the wires and also filled in all the gaps. And finally, it's time to glue this onto the rectangle that we drew on the base earlier. You might get some overflow like this. Just take the nozzle of your glue gun and just kind of scrape it like this to help smooth out the ends. Now the next step is to simply take the foot guards, put some glue on the end, and place it onto the stand. And basically just hold it until the glue is hard enough to hold it on its own so that it doesn't come apart. Once you've glued in the foot placer thingies, uh, that's basically the base of the stand. And you could leave it like this, but it's pretty ugly. So what I like to do is just coat it with a layer of paint and just kind of decorate it to make it look good. And that's basically it. So I'm just going to show a time lapse of me decorating this stand. I have one of these logo stickers from my Series 1 dolls, so I'm going to take one of those and stick it onto the stand. Alright, so here is the finished stand. I decided to paint the little nubblies yellow because I was going to be putting Sally on it and she has yellow pants. It's actually sheer coincidence that my first stand actually um, ended up having pink nubblies that perfectly match Noah's pants. But if your doll is wearing pants, you might want to consider this. See, it actually camouflages quite well. So I'm going to try putting Sally on here. And it doesn't camouflage super well, but it's better than the bright red that was there. So yeah, that's how to make your own hair adorable stand. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!